Okay, so we're back in the stairwell again, and this is at the press box at Oklahoma. This is the best I could do. I'm sorry for the echo. It's not my studio, but <laughs> we got to talk about this at the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I'm not on the step. No, because you're the like and subscribe because I upload a video every single day. It's always doing related to college football related sports related. We have a good time in there. Oh my god, Parnell Motley. Okay. Alright, so let's unpack this. Oklahoma knows that Idaho State can play, but should they be able to score 41 points? Absolutely not. So you go into halftime and you're up 35 to 14. You feel pretty good about it. People start leaving the stadium. You understand. Traffic sucks. You gotta take Sooner Road or you gotta take 35 all the way back down. And if you're going to Tulsa like me, it's a two hour drive and the game's already dragging on because Mike DeVee is the referee and all the yellows are out here, particularly in the fourth quarter to slow down this game. But while this game's being slowed down, Jalen Hurts is not able to complete any passes. And Riley decides, yo, the running backs who have been running so well, I no longer wanna use them after starting the game with Kennedy Brooks and feeding Kennedy Brooks and Kennedy Brooks finishes the game with 120 yards on the ground. And yet, we're looking at the running backs and going, why don't you use them? And then Trey Sermon gets hurt, and we're like, okay, understand why you don't use him. Don't have an update yet. He did couldn't put any weight on the leg, hoping that it's okay. Kenneth Mann goes down, defensive end. Yes, but these are bad things, but they're not the kinds of things that, you know, would lead you to give up a 21-point lead, or you would think they would be. And then that's exactly what you do. Because with a lead, all of a sudden you see Riley doesn't necessarily know what he's doing yet. And you would think that was a thing that he'd be able to put away. With the Georgia game and the Rose Bowl and here of late, we got the last two outings for Oklahoma, and he's been good. 42 to 41, you needed a late stop of a two point conversion with like 24 seconds left to play against Iowa State. Five and three, Iowa State. To keep your hopes alive and get into college football playoff, and I'm getting text messages from all my buddies like, oh, he's playing soft, and I, I have no rebuttal for that because they couldn't tackle or they wouldn't tackle. The rush defense is now a problem because check this out, Puka Williams ran all over this defense. All right, cool, fine. Puka Williams is a class running back. We understand that. Then James Gilbert, Kansas State, who the hell is James Gilbert? Who was that to us? And you get ran over and you take the loss. And then in this game, a true freshman in Brees Hall, a true freshman that I picked to be Big 12 player of the year, but still a true freshman, Brees Hall, runs all over this defense. So the run defense, is not there. And on top of that, I said earlier in the day, Jalen Hurts was trying to throw the ball to the other team and he's going to throw an interception whether you want him to or not. And then what did he do? He waited until Oklahoma got the ball back, just up a score to throw a pick inexplicably on his side of the line scrimmage. All you gotta do is just eat the ball because you're gonna run out of the clock. So now Brock Purdy has the ball with two, three, three left to go. And what do they do? They go in this score. And it was, wasn't pretty, but they get the six. And now it's 42 to 41, and Matthew Campbell doesn't hesitate because he doesn't have any timeouts. He's going for two. So now you need Pardon Motley, of all people who've been getting torched for the most part, but had some good plays. They were all getting torched. Buki was getting torched. Buki had a really crappy unsportsman like Connolly. But, and it led to six. But Pardon Motley comes with the pick. An irony of irony here. His interception does not count as a turnover, turnover or a takeaway in the scorebook because it was a just a failed two-point conversion, because football is weird. But when we're talking about turnovers, we, 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 we don't have any. There's no, there's no turnover. There's, there's no apple, there's no peach, there's no football turnover. And you know, to hell with it. Turnovers are no longer a thing at the University of Oklahoma. We're closed now. And would we be harping on turnovers so much if the defensive coordinator did not harp on turnovers when they first got the job and said that turnovers are a big part of his defense? No, we would be harping on the turnovers if they didn't do so much slanting and so much, you know, man coverage. No, we would be harping on the turnovers if the defense was more complicated instead of being simple, which is what we want. We want simple. We want simple. But also demand effort. No, effort means tackling. Effort means putting people on the ground. Kenneth Murray Jr. was actually wrong a lot today. Deshaun White managed to pick up a pass interference penalty. You know, we, we had the kid from Norman, Charlie Kalar, come up with what could have been the biggest play of the game when, you know, he's torching your defense backs. And watching the Buki line up on tight ends is a thing that I wish would stop, all right? And what, like for the last play of the game, Brock Purdy had three dudes six, six, six foot six and taller out there against OU defense backs who are five foot 11, five foot 10, five foot eight, 
you know what I'm saying? Pat Fields and Larry Turner Yell aren't the biggest cats in the world. And as much as I want to talk about C.D. Lamb and the performance that he had, where he had eight catches for like 167 yards and two tunnies, he also put the ball on the floor, which also led to points for Iowa State. Because my man was out there blocking, he was catching, looking like he was going to walk away with this bullet in the cup award. And he still might. This is still what I think a great, one of two great games that he's had this year, one of the other one being Texas, where he feels like the best wide receiver in all of college football. But the more you look at it, the more you're like, yeah, but you put the ball on the floor. And you can't put the ball on the floor and be the best wide receiver in college football. Maybe you can. But we don't want that to happen. And then again, with the whole running back situation, what is it with this, man? Because Lincoln Riley said on Monday, hey, we got the freshest set of tailbacks in the country. Cool, run them. It's November. You have literally four games left to play and you cannot lose a one of them. So now you're gonna have Alabama fans talking about, yo, we played what is one of the best teams, if not to them, the best team in all of America to a five point loss in Oklahoma, barely beat Iowa State 42-41. And yeah, that's an argument that people are going to try out because we still get to pick and select who gets into this playoff instead of doing what I want, which is put 16 teams in it so that, you know, this doesn't necessarily hurt you. But even so, nobody outside of the Big 12 gives Iowa State any respect. And that's what really hurts about this game. Because even if Iowa State was a two-loss team like, say, Kansas State was, nobody would care. And then Kansas State takes a loss to a Texas team that Oklahoma beat. It's just not a good look for Oklahoma right now. And I'm going to have a hard time seeing them move up in the rankings a whole lot because when you take a look at this thing, you got Penn State with the loss, right, who will probably still be a top 10 team. Minnesota might fall up. Baylor's still undefeated. And uh, Oregon and Utah are on a bye, right? And Georgia beat Missouri like they stole something, right? So, like, what do you – Clemson destroyed in North Carolina State. So the only team in the top 10 that actually played this weekend that looked bad that didn't, you know, didn't also take an L – Oklahoma. And now you gotta have to deal with this thing with Penn State, right? But it'll work itself out, is what I'm saying. Because Oklahoma has plays Baylor, they get game day in McLean and Waco, and it'll be a one loss team versus undefeated team, Big 12 supremacy, yada yada yada. But this needs to get fixed quick, fast, and in a hurry. Like Rich needs to hold another come to Jesus meeting, but I thought he held a come to Jesus meeting. I thought that was the whole point of bi week preparation for this game, is that you don't wanna be Iowa State because they're gonna be on the pain train. No, that's not what happened. And now it's like, cool, if Oklahoma gets in the college football playoff, what chance do they have of winning a national championship? Because you've seen Ohio State, you've seen LSU, you've seen Clemson. Like, what do you expect if you don't get the defense picks? Because even in a day where Oklahoma puts up, you know, 500 yards, if you don't give up 41 points of offensive football, what the hell are we even doing with this? So, yes, be upset, be testy. I am, I understand. Somebody right here, and it needs to get fixed quick, fast, and hurt. All right, hit for me, Deuces.